Hi everybody, I'm Justin from Main Man Bassing. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to change the water impeller on a Mercury 9.9 .9 four stroke outboard. If you're new to the channel, I do product reviews, fishing adventures, and how-to videos that all revolve around bass fishing in the Northeast. If you're into fishing, I'd love to have you as a sub, so hit that subscribe button. The water impeller sits in your lower unit and it's gonna drive water up through your engine and uh, mainly to you know, regulate the temperature of your engine. And uh, you gotta check the, your owner's manual about how often you should replace them. Um, I, although I think it's just a, a good idea every season to replace it. Like at the beginning of the season, I'd change your, um, your lower unit lube, and then I'd change the water impeller because you just don't want it failing. It's, it's made of rubber and it spins around. I'll show you when we get into it, but it, it can break and, uh, and you know, and then you can be in trouble. So I just think it's a good idea to change it every season. It's a $20 piece and you need to look in the on your your parts catalog and get this get the uh, part number and then you probably get them on uh, Amazon depending on how big they are. Uh, so you know that's that. I got to change camera angles and I'll show you how to get into the lower unit so you can start replacing it. All right. Before we go any further, I'm going to preface. I am not an expert. All right, you're getting into your lower unit here. You got some potential of really ruining your engine. I'm not an expert. You know, you need to consult your owner's manual and a, a licensed uh, mechanic who deals with your brand. I am not responsible for anything. This is videos for demonstration purposes only. So, see, so just, just, you have to recognize that, all right? But here we have our lower unit. This is gonna remove uh, before we start that, we want to get into this link right here. This is the shifting rod. Um, I'm going to change camera angles here and get up close to that. So this right here is your shifting rod. Um, you change gears, it goes up and down. I want it in neutral uh, so the drive shaft's not engaged. And gently loosen it. You want to bring it all the way down, and what it you see, this is actually two split rods, and this is just linking them up right here. All right, so that's off. Um, you know, it's probably best to remove it because, depending on if you're just going to do this real quick, but if you're going to leave it for any amount of time, there's a chance that you could lose this, it could spin off, and you could lose it. But I just remove it all the way all right so that's going to allow you to pull that um, the lower unit off here we have four bolts and they're actually numbered um, one two three four and so i take them out in opposite order and uh, you want to be real careful here loosening them you don't want to strip these might be a good idea might be a good idea to buy an extra spare of these because like Mine are already kind of stripped a little bit. I mean, I can still get them off, but. Lower units unbolted. You're just gonna carefully slide it off. All right. This is, it's your drive shaft here. This is your shifting linkage. The water impeller sits in here. So I'm going to put this on my boat and we'll get into uh, changing the water impeller out, all right? So your water impeller is going to be in here. Um, you want to be careful. There's a, there's a pin in here that will pop out as soon as you slide this off. But you just take off these four bolts. There are washers on these bolts, so you want to watch those. I have all the bolts unscrewed, so you're gonna take them all out. And again, there's a pin in here that is gonna pop out, all right? So you gotta watch that pin. It would be a shame to lose that, that pin. Watch the washers on here. Okay, there's the pin right there. Where is it? All right, I'm gonna slide this up. The pin is, it's right in here, I gotta get it. There it is. 
There's that pin. All right, you don't want to lose that. All right, and here's your impeller. This is a brand new one. Let me, let me go get the old one, hold on. So this is the old one, All right? You can just see it's just completely shredded and broken. It's like this, this, some of these are like ripped off, like this one right here, completely ripped off. And so water, it's not pushing water up to the pump. Um, so you're just gonna pull it out. It's made of rubber. Pull the old one out, watch out for this gasket. There's a gasket right here. You wanna be careful of that. You don't wanna tear that. You wanna inspect that. Like I got, I have rubber in there. You know, it's pretty torn up, man. And then I have a, uh, right in here, the piece of plastic. I don't know what that's from. If it looks real bad, possibly consider just replacing the whole part and don't, you might have to get this gasket if you do that. I'm gonna put it back on though, just assuming everything's okay. Oh, it's in really rough shape, man. That's what happens when you don't follow the owner's manual. You know, as far as greasing goes, I'm not really sure. There is some grease in there. Uh, you wanna check the owner's manual <laughs> or call your brand and see what they recommend. That's that. And then so I'll get back to putting it, the new one on. All right, so you have a plate here. You wanna line that up. Here, there's a little indent. That's where that pin is gonna go. Once you put it on, the pin sits in there and you'll see. Um, as far as I know, I, I don't think it matters which end you sit on, you seat it on. They're both kind of the same, right? So, it's really difficult. You want to slide it on the top. This is the way I did it anyways. Okay, you want to slide it on the top. You want to mark where the... There, that pin's in. Just wanna be careful. Um, that pin's gonna hold it in place, let it spin. The pin catches the, the impeller as it spins. So that's the way I do it, that's how I seat it. And then I kinda just come over the top of this thing. I kinda just gingerly force it down and try to bend these into place. And just be careful, but it will, it'll sit, All right? And then once you get it sit, once you seat it, spin the driver shaft, the drive shaft. Make sure that those, um, all those blades on the impeller aren't caught on anything that's spinning. All right? And you just go back to putting the bolts in. Uh, you know, and most of what I found with the engines, with the outboards, is that you don't need a tremendous amount of pressure with the, uh, with the bolts. You want to just snug it down firmly. Like, you don't want to go crazy, especially when you start getting into the carburetor. I'm just going around clockwise. There there's, doesn't seem to be an order that you have to screw these into. Just going down snug and not really putting a whole lot of pressure. I don't want these threads to strip or crack any of the gaskets that are in there. That's pretty snug. It's snug. Snug. It's 
good. So, new impellers in. I'm gonna change angles. We're gonna put this back up. All right, I'm ready to put the lower unit back in. <laughs> we wanna make sure we have it facing the correct way. Uh, and you wanna look up here with a flashlight and you'll see uh, where the drive shaft should go. Just kind of sort of align yourself. And then there's a separate hole uh, right here for the shift link. <laughs> You just want to gingerly put it up. You don't want to mash these teeth. Make sure you're in neutral, right? So the drive shaft can engage. So the drive shaft's open. And you just gotta be ginger here. Gingerly. Little bit of force there just a little bit you don't want to go crazy you don't want those teeth to get binded up um, I would put in just a bolt and these are numbered so you want to start with one all right so I got the bolts halfway in I'm gonna start I'm gonna go in order just tightening them in order until I get them snug all right so these are almost set I just want to check this uh, shifting link I'm going to tighten this bulb up a little bit, keep it connected, and now I'm just going to tighten it all the way. Following the order. Moment of truth here, I've done a lot today. I uh, changed the lower unit oil. I changed the water impeller, which means I did disengage the lower unit. And I was changing some gaskets in the carb. So there's a lot going on here. <laughs> Moment of truth, we'll see what happens. The impeller should be pissing water out here really well. Should be a nice stream. The gear should change. Let's we'll see what happens. Look at that. You can put a choke on. This is a nice healthy stream. Even when it's in neutral idling, it's pumping out water. It feels great. Here's change. Oh, it sounds great, man. Reverse. Alright. Ultimate test, put the trim up. There we go. A little bit of water. And still. So, in the end there, uh, when I put the trim up, it wasn't quite spitting out water, but I think that's due to uh, just that these earmuffs aren't the greatest. Uh, they don't really fit it that well, but when they were on and the trim was down, it was just, I haven't, it hasn't, I haven't seen that much water exit in like two or three years so I think it's all set when I put the trim up I was just making sure I wouldn't lose power and that the engine wouldn't cut off from gas because I've been having that's the issues I had last year seems to work fine gears shifted when you're uh, when you remove the lower unit and you're putting in putting it back in you gotta I kept mine in neutral uh, and you, you should be able to, once you get it back on, you should be able to shift through all your gears. So you kind of just have to play with it. Just be careful. Um, but if you can't get it in reverse after everything's on, you, you did you got to go back there and play with that that link, that uh, shift link rod and uh, the nut on it. But everything's good now. Um, 
I know I'm super stoked they're gonna put it in the water, but thanks for watching. I hope it helped. I hope it gave you good perspective. And I hope you catch real big bass soon. If you're into fishing, I'd love to have you as a sub. Hit that subscribe button. And I hope you have a great, safe 2021 fishing season. Thank you. Bye.